In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No matter the story you read, you read it to pick up details about characters, plot points, and so on. But this is something we learn from everyday life that many times, not every detail is spoken or described. Sometimes we have to read between the lines to understand another aspect of the story. For good authors don't always tell you what's happening because they want you to figure it out before they just come out and tell you. This can also be the case with Scripture, too. No matter how much we want our biblical writers to just come out and tell us everything we want to know, they simply don't. They leave some things to our imagination on purpose. We're supposed to try to fill in some details because in doing so, we find ourselves to now be characters of their story. By not telling us every detail, the biblical writers, and well, all writers for that matter, want you to relate with the characters on the page to see your life as sim similar with the one they're describing. For when making this argument from silence, though, we must be careful not to step beyond the bounds of the story. We should never take an argument from silence to be our key reason to believing or not believing something. For while some parts of the story may be left out, that doesn't mean what is omitted is instantly true or false. Rather, as I said before, these omissions are simply meant to give you space to jump into the story, into the very shoes of that character. For so we get to theorize about what we would do if we were in their place. For by doing this, or meant to gain a new understanding and appreciation for the actions or decisions that any character makes. For so let us jump into our gospel lesson and turn towards one character in particular, to Jairus. He's a ruler of the synagogue yet he yet finds find himself, himself coming before, before Jesus, Jesus to beg for his help. So let, let us follow, follow the path of Jairus, Jairus so that so at the end we can better understand these very words of Jesus, of Jesus as we as learn, learn today. today. I, say I say to you, you arise. arise. Jesus and his disciples had just crossed the sea after the calming of the storm, as we read last week, so that they could come to this other side of the sea and possibly be rid of the crowds. But here across the sea, Jesus runs into another large crowd who is seeking after him for all the miracles they've heard him do. Yet there's, Yet there's just, just one, one person, person from this, this crowd that we're told about, Jairus. Jairus, Jairus is, is a ruler, ruler of the synagogue. Of the synagogue. That, that means he's, he's technically not, not a Pharisee, Pharisee though he though is, he is part, part of the religious, of the religious elite. elite. It's for it's this, for this reason, reason that we that should be utterly shocked by his actions, actions even as we read. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. Jairus, a well-respected ruler of the synagogue, puts his face into the dirt, 
before Jesus just to ask for his help. He stoops so low in humility before Jesus just for the sake of his daughter. And of course, who among us wouldn't understand Jairus' desperation? His daughter is so sick that she's close to the point of death. For no parent ever desires to see their child sick, especially nearing death itself. For so Jesus quickly agrees and goes with him. But then it's on the way to Jairus' house that we now all of a sudden have this other story interjected into the middle. For Jairus, who was our focus, now falls completely into the background of this story. For now, we have a woman who has suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years. Such a circumstance would cause her to be completely ostracized from society based on Levitical law. So again, as we read, there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. There's no denying this woman has suffered much. She has suffered so greatly that Mark even calls her suffering a scourging. You know scourging like the 40 lashes which Jesus receives before his crucifixion? But the amazing thing about her story isn't actually her healing, but that Jesus stops everything just to focus on her. For she's healed simply by touching the edge of Jesus' garment. But Jesus doesn't let her slip away in this monster of a crowd. But it's at this point, I want you to consider again Jairus. We know that Jairus was right next to him this entire time. So what do you what think, do you think Jairus, Jairus was thinking about this delay? delay? I know what I, I would think. think. Hurry, Hurry up, up Jesus. Jesus! Let's, Let's get, a get a move on! on. My I daughter needs you right, right now. now! Maybe Jairus, Jairus was even was simply praying. praying. Praying, praying that, that his daughter, daughter would hold on long, long enough, enough for Jesus, Jesus to arrive. Or maybe it was maybe something else. else. Or whatever, whatever it may, it may be, be, we're, we're simply, simply not, not told. told. But, I but I think we can, we can all imagine, imagine. Or we can we all understand, understand his desperation. desperation. We, know we know that, that very feeling, feeling of helplessness, helplessness in the face the of a of decaying, decaying health, health. Something, something over which we have very little or no, or no control, control at all. all. And now, now Jesus? Jesus most likely his last option is very much delayed. But there's another part, another unspoken part of these stories that we're meant to see here. It's not a theory either. For because these two stories are interjected one into another, we're also to see the similarity between the plight of these two between Jairus' daughter, daughter and the and woman, woman who was healed. healed. For as, as Jesus, Jesus heals, heals this woman, woman Jairus, Jairus is supposed, supposed to see in her his own his daughter. daughter. He's, supposed He's supposed to see in this, this woman her, her healing, healing as, the as the same healing Jesus will provide his daughter. His daughter. For, consider For consider even, even Jesus' Jesus final words, words to that, that woman. woman. Daughter! daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Jesus addresses this woman tenderly, daughter. For so Jesus says this, so Jairus would think of his same love for his daughter and know that that's the love Jesus has for her too. 
For as Jesus and Jairus approach his house, suddenly, though, members from his household come to meet him and tell him his daughter has died. Time has seemed to run out. But then this is where Jesus gets to reassure Jairus. For so Jesus says, do not fear, only believe. For just as that other woman was healed for her faith, so too would Jairus' daughter be healed by faith in Jesus. For after putting outside all those who had gathered for this little girl, Jesus goes to her bedside and says, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. Jesus speaks new life into this girl and by his words raises her from the dead. And that's perhaps the pinnacle of the story, you would think. But it's not not just just their their suffering suffering that was was similar. similar. But now now there's there's a greater greater similarity similarity for us to see in Jesus' Jesus healing healing as well. For as Jesus Jesus raises Jairus' Jairus' daughter daughter up from from death, death, Jesus had had also also granted a resurrection of sorts sorts to that that woman woman as well. well. For in healing healing her, He removes removes from her her everything everything that had previously forbid her her from truly living life. life. He grants grants to her her by his healing healing, new new life life by faith faith in him. him. For that's That's what resurrection is. is. And so So too is it for us. That as Jesus Jesus grants grants us this this type type of resurrection, resurrection, to foreshadow foreshadow our resurrection resurrection on the last day. That as Jesus Jesus cares cares for us when we're sick, when he cares for us when we're down, he comes to also also remove from us us that that which prevents prevents us from living living new new and and eternal eternal life. life. And he has has removed it. it. He has removed removed everything everything that that keeps keeps us from that that life. life. That is, is our our sin, sin, our sickness, our our death. death. Jesus Jesus takes takes all of that that upon himself himself and goes to the cross and and dies for us. So as far as the east east is from the west, west, so far far has he removed removed it from from you. And then there's there's this, this, that the the resurrection he grants grants to these these two two beloved beloved women points us also to the resurrection of Jesus and his final victory over sin and death on our behalf. For in Jesus, we are made well or saved from death through his death upon the cross and his resurrection from the grave. And so shall Jesus one day come to our bedside to our grave, and then then say to us, I say say to you, arise. Your Your faith faith has has saved you. you. And there there he shall shall lead us into into new and and eternal eternal life. life. For you see, see, may we see see ourselves in Jairus, Jairus, in the the woman, woman, in his his daughter, daughter, For just just as Jesus Jesus had cared cared for them, them, granting them them this resurrection resurrection leading to new life, so too by Jesus' Jesus own death and resurrection resurrection, shall he he grant grant to us a resurrection resurrection leading leading us to eternity, eternity, new new and eternal eternal life. life. For the steadfast steadfast love of the Lord Lord never changes. changes. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. That as God has given this to Jairus, to his daughter, to the woman, so too shall he give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.